Well, good morning once again um, to this service of morning prayer, and it's lovely to have you um, joining in with this as we begin our day in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to read again from Paul of Gooder's book, This Risen Existence, and I'm going to take off where I left yesterday. There is even more to Jesus' resurrection than that. Although not every Jew in the first century believed in life after death, many of those who did believed in a bodily resurrection that would happen at a dramatic moment in the future when God would intervene in the world and return the kingdom to Israel. It was they believed at this point that the dead would be raised and that a time of peace and prosperity would begin. The resurrection would herald a new order in which Israel would be freed from her enemies and would live in peace and prosperity. To a lot of Jews living at the time of Jesus, believing that a resurrection had happened would have meant believing that the end times when all this would happen had already started. No wonder then that the earliest disciples struggled to get their heads around Jesus' resurrection. Jesus had risen from the dead, but no one else had. Jesus had risen from the dead, but the world was apparently no different from the way it was before. The Romans still occupied Palestine, the poor were still poor, Israel still downtrodden. A lot of the New Testament writers made sense of this by seeing Jesus' resurrection as a radical and transforming event which changed the world now. For them, the something more of Jesus' resurrection was a belief that the end times had already started. For them, the resurrection signalled far, far more than a dead person living. It marked the start of a whole new way of being. The end times had begun, but not in their entirety. New creation sprang forth, but still waited for fulfilment. I heard one of the best ways of describing this not in a theology book, but in a BBC drama, The Second Coming, which was televised in 2003. The play, written by Russell Davies, was about a character, Stephen Baxter, who discovered he was the Son of God. In many ways, it was disappointing and unsatisfying. But there was a brilliant scene when someone described the moment of revelation when the world recognised that Steve was the Son of God. She said that it was like a slice of one day being displaced into another. The event happened Thursday evening, and there's a great big chunk of Tuesday in the middle. Odd though this may sound, this is probably one of the best descriptions of the displacement of time that took place at Jesus' resurrection that I have ever come across. Jesus' resurrection was a slice of end times occurring about 2,000 years ago. More importantly even than that, the event of the resurrection continues to allow us to experience a slice of end times now. As a result, the world is as it always was with its wars, heartache, poverty and oppressions, but with glimmers of end time perfection. In the midst of conflict and aggression, we can from time to time taste moments of reconciliation and of compassion. Occasions when the parent of a murdered son can forgive his killers. When a community can rise against the gangs that terrorise it and make it a better place. When we can rise above the petty arguments that spoil our human relationships are, for me, all a slice of the end times now. Some are dramatic, world-changing occasions. Others are small and apparently insignificant. Some affect whole nations and continents, others one or two individuals. The occasions may only be momentary, and we quickly move back to the harsh reality of every day, but their effects linger, suggesting that new creation is possible and that transformation can happen. As so often, C.S. Lewis put his finger on this beautifully in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, where he talks about Narnia being under the spell of the White Witch and being in a state that was always winter and never Christmas. For years I thought that this was wrong. Surely he meant always winter and never spring. I now see that he was right. When the spell of the White Witch was broken by Aslan's return to Narnia, 
the first sign of it was Father Christmas, then the melting of snow, and finally the full blossoming into spring. If we use a similar analogy, we now live in the period between the advent of Father Christmas and the full melting of the snow. Spring is on its way, and we see signs that it is coming. But the full blossoming of the world as God yearns for it is a way off. Belief in the resurrection is an act of rebellion against the evil, corruption and oppression that can so easily swamp us. Believing in the resurrection can be a refusal to accept the world is as it is, that it can never change and that we must accept it simply as it is. Believing in the resurrection allows us to see the world with a long view, a perspective that looks backwards to the resurrection and forwards to the end times, recognising traces of resurrection and end times in what is happening now. Believing in the resurrection can and should transform not only how we view the world, but how we live in it. We should become people in whom others can see new life, and people who introduce that new life wherever the world is denying. Resurrection makes a difference not only to Jesus and the earliest disciples, but also to us as we live out our days, day by day. We'll hear more from Paula Gooda tomorrow. I'm going to start again by reading today's uh, devotional from Jesus Calling. Trust me and don't be afraid. Many things feel out of control. Your routines are not running smoothly. You tend to feel more secure when your life is predictable. Let me lead you to the rock that is higher than you and your circumstances. Take refuge in the shelter of my wings, where you are absolutely secure. When you are shaken out of your comfortable routines, grip my hand tightly and look for growth opportunities. Instead of bemoaning the loss of your comfort, accept the challenge of something new. I lead you on from glory to glory, making you fit for my kingdom. Say yes to the ways I work in your life. Trust me and don't be afraid. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm this morning is Psalm 37. Fret not because of evildoers. Be not jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like grass and like the green herb fade away. Trust in the Lord and be doing good. Dwell in the land and be nourished with truth. Let your delight be in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your judgments and righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. 
Do not fret over those that prosper as they follow their evil schemes. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret lest you be moved to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. You will search for their place, and find them gone. But the lowly shall possess the land, and shall delight in the abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous, and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and the needy, to slaughter those who walk in truth. Their sword shall go through their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than great riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the godly, and their inheritance shall stand for ever. They shall not be put to shame in perilous times, and in the days of famine they shall have enough. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and convened us into the kingdom of his Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. For he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. Today's canticle, set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. It flashes our flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If all the wealth of our house were offered for love, it would be utterly scorned. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we're going to go with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. 
So they cast, and now they were not able to draw in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in with the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with the fish. Then as soon as they came to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, one hundred and fifty-three, and although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This was now the third time Jesus had showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? For Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised. For we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We say together the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray. In every age, Lord, you have raised up holy people, to reflect the light of Christ and to teach us the way of holiness. We thank you for those who have been our teachers in the school of Christ, those who have given us understanding, who study the faith that the church has handed on, and clarity to those who communicate the gospel in our changing world. We thank you for those who have been shepherds of your people, Give a pastoral heart to all deacons, priests and bishops, and the needful gifts to all your people in their own ministries. We thank you for those who have been Christian rulers in the world, and for those who have carried the good news to lands where it has not been before. Please give wisdom to all who have power and influence among the nations, and establish your sovereignty among people of every race. We thank you for those whom you have called to live in community. Establish mutual love among those drawn into fellowship in your service and bless with Christ's presence all the communities to which we relate. We thank you for those who have brought wholeness through the medicine of the gospel. Please give skill to those who minister healing and reconciliation in your name. Comfort all who cry out to you from any sort of distress. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God of love and hope, you made the world and you care for all creation, but the world feels strange right now. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. Some people are worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their family and their friends. Please be with them and help them to find peace. We pray today for the doctors and nurses and scientists and all who are working to discover the right medicines to help those who are ill. We thank you that even in these anxious times you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Whatever you are doing today, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Do have a good day.